Hi friends, welcome to Classic Education YouTube channel. Uh, let us try to understand the philosophy of yoga today, okay? Because very recently, the world has observed 8th International Yoga Day, that, that is on 21st June of 2022. From 2014 onwards, the world has started to observe because of the efforts of the United Nations as well as, well as by the promotion of the government of in, uh, India, the yoga has become the international event from 2014 onwards. This year, we have or the world has observed the 8th International Yoga Day, right? But now, it, it will become very important for us to understand being the Indians, you know, having you know, contributed such a beautiful gift to the world, we have to understand what exactly the yoga is, right? What are its various components? Who is the major you know, proponent of this school? When this school of you know, philosophy originated? So we have to understand all these things. Then only it will become more and more meaningful. Just by observing the days is not that important. Yes, uh, at least we can you know, uh, involve in some of the exercises on the yoga day. But apart from that, if you understand all the background of this you know, uh, important philosophy of India, then it will be more and more meaningful. Now, <coughs> try to understand the first try to understand what is Indian philosophy. What exactly is the philosophy, right? See, Indian philosophy, that means the thought process, whatever the intellectual minds have, they, uh, they are there, they have contributed to the deliberations in India. All these deliberations, you know, they are regarded as the philosophies. There are various philosophies in India. There are various philosophers, a lot of, you know, scholarly people were there. They have contributed too much to the Indian philosophy. This has become the one of the, you know, best philosophies in the world, right? See, Indian philosophy can be divided into two parts. One is orthodox school of philosophy and another one is heterodox school, school of philosophy. So what is this orthodox uh, school that is Nastika school, sorry, uh, orthodox school is also called as the Astika school and the heterodox uh, school is called as the Nastika school. That means the major difference between these two schools is that their belief in the God their belief in the Veda uh, uh, scriptures, their belief in the life after the death, their belief in the, you know, uh, Brahman and the Atman, that is Jivatma and Paramatma. Let us, you know, concentrate on this. Indian philosophy can be divided into these orthodox and heterodox schools based on one of the three alternate criteria. There are three criteria to determine which is Astika school and which is Nastika school. These criteria are Vedas, uh, Brahman and the Atman and the afterlife and the devas whether they believe in the life after death or the devas whether they believe in the brahmanism or uh, that means the paramatma atman means this jivatma and paramatma whether they believe in the vedas or not based on these you know criteria these you know uh, schools are divided into orthodox and heterodox or nastika school and astika school there are other methods of classification. These are not only the three ways in which Indian philosophy can be divided, but there are other ways of classification also. Numerous ways are there. But for example, Vidyaranya, the saint Vidyaranya has classified Indian philosophy into 16 types. Okay, 16 schools of uh, philosophies are there according to the Vidyaranya in India, right? See, he has included, apart from you know, these uh, different schools, he has also uh, included the traditions of uh, Shaiva tradition and Raseshwara traditions. These are different traditions he has included. Not only the Vidyaranya, there are various other scholars or the saints or the philosophers. Occurred. They have classified Indian philosophy into various schools. Okay, This is just you know uh, brief background. Then, common themes in different schools. There might be various schools. There might be very uh, only two very important schools of thought or there might be 16 various schools of thought or the philosophical schools might be there. But for all of these schools, there are some uh, uniting factors. There are some uniting themes. They will you know uh, become common for all these schools. What these different schools believe in, they are the, the dharma, that means the path of morality, Karma, that means your action, karma is nothing but the action, that is belief in the uh, fact that the good karma or the good actions will give you the good results, bad actions will lead you to the bad results, okay. This is karma philosophy, then samsara, that is worldly life, they believe in the reincarnation of the life, they believe in the dukkha or renunciation, right. That means this worldly life is full of problems, that is dukkha, renunciation, 
that means the sacrifices you have to renounce you have to to overcome some of the problems you have to sacrifice uh, sacrifice something or you have to renounce the worldly life see then you have to meditate to contemplate on your you have to contemplate on yourself to understand the universe the mechanism of universe or to uh, associate yourself with the surrounding universe you have to meditate these are all the different concepts which are you know basic or which are common to all the schools of uh, indian philosophy right then however these schools differ in their assumptions about the nature of existence as well as the specifics of the path to the ultimate liberation see they though they believe in various concepts these concepts are very common right to all these philosophies but they these philosophies vary in uh, with respect to the existence or the nature of existence and the specifics of the path to the ultimate liberation see uh we believe the indians they believe in the moksha concept that means salvation or mukti see this you know uh, body is because of the uh, our previous uh, life's karmas right our the summation of the previous you know life's karma will end up uh, in this you know uh, life like this i am the form of according to these philosophies the those who believe in the reincarnations are those who believe in the life after death or rebirths they think that this life is because of the my old karmas in the previous life right then the path to ultimate liberation this you know bodily existence must be liberated see i should not be the uh, i should not be leading the human life which is full of dukkha or to overcome the dukkha i have to renounce some of the worldly pleasures to avoid the problems i must liberate myself right there are various ways to liberate myself that means to get the moksha or to get the mukti or to have the salvation i have to practice different ways these ways will lead me to the liberation see the ways in which i get the liberation there are differences these schools of philosophy they vary in the ways in which the mukti can be obtained okay then there are six major orthodox schools in india i said there are broadly there are two categories of indian philosophy orthodox schools of thought and heterodox schools of thought let us come to orthodox schools of that what these schools how many schools are there and what are their thinkings right now there are six major orthodox schools one is nyaya vaisheshika samkhya yoga mimamsa and vedanta these are the six major orthodox schools of thought that means they believe in the vedas they believe in the uh, yes vedas right nyaya the school of nyaya the founded by the gautama this vaisheshika school is founded by the kannada the samkhya school is uh, founded by kapila patanjali is the founder for the yoga school of thought then purva mimamsa this mimamsa school is also called as the purva mimamsa purva mimamsa this school was founded by jaimini vasa is the founder for vedanta school of thought or the uttar mimamsa right these are the different schools of orthodox uh, philosophy right these are the gautama kannada kapila patanjali jaimini vasa these are the founders of different schools right these six orthodox schools are also called the shat darshanas the meaning of the school or the philosophy the meaning of philosophy is darshana philosophy is nothing but your darshana right there are six schools that is why they are called as the shat darshanas shat means six darshana means philosophies these six orthodox schools are called as the shat darshanas right then sometimes these groups are often come coupled into three groups for both historical and conceptual conceptual reasons there are some similarities between these uh, six schools of thought uh, for example there is a similarity between nyaya and vaisheshika school there is a similarity between sankhya and yoga there is similarity between mimamsa and vedanta because of these similarities sometimes what happens instead of six schools of philosophy they will be combined together and they will be made only three groups okay but broadly there are six major uh, schools of philosophy you have to remember all these six these are not that important but you have to just understand that there is a similarity between these uh, schools like uh, between uh, nyaya vaisheshika sankhya yoga and mimamsa and vedanta 
each tradition included different currents and sub schools right though there might be six schools of ortho uh, orthodox philosophy or six schools of philosophy which belong to the orthodox school but within these six schools there are sub categories based on uh, some concepts okay these you know sub schools can be divided into advaita vishishta advaita dvaita 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 uh, shuddha dvaita and achintya bheda bheda these are the different you know uh, sub schools within the orthodox schools they believe in the atma and paramatma some of these schools believe in only paramatma the, some of these schools believe only in the atma right uh, they also feel that to get the uh, salvation you have to unite yourself with the parmatma see how to uh, unite with the parmatma all these things you know uh, vary from school to school that is why there are different schools of philosophy then this is all about the orthodox schools of philosophy now let us look into the major heterodox, heterodox schools of philosophy they are also called as the shramanic school or nastika school see in your uh, common you know, language nastika can be understood as the the people who do not believe in the god they are called as the nastikas the people who believe in the god they are called as the astikas right see these schools they do not believe much in the god or they do not believe in the vedas uh, for orthodox schools of philosophy vedas are the base they all those six major orthodox schools believe in the scriptures called the vedas okay they are the infallible for those orthodox schools vedas are the infallible scriptures whatever said in the vedas they are true right those schools follow the vedas in their true uh, letter and spirit but these heterodox schools are the nastika schools they do not believe in the vedas they do not believe in the concept called the god okay see Do, what are these five major heterodox schools they are jainism buddhism ajivika school adnana school and charvaka school again uh, all of the these are called as the shramanic traditions that means uh, it was a time when the uh, jainism born when the buddhism born there was a lot of difficulty to follow the hindu religion there were various you know restrictions only uh, some specialized people were able to practice the hinduism they were able to you know uh, get the darshan of the god in the temples okay there are lot of difficulties to follow the hindu religion to overcome some of the problems which were imposed on the common people some other you know enlightened people emerged like the buddha or mahavira they made the religion very easy they said that to uh, there is no necessity to construct the temples to go to the temples or to follow the difficult rituals there is no need for that if you want to achieve the or if you want to achieve the true knowledge just you have to roam around uh, the world you can just by observing the world you can understand what exactly is the meaning of this life and the uh, uh, surrounding environment these schools led to the this kind of thought they are called as the uh, shramanic schools of thought or the nastika schools okay now let us come to the particular school of thought the yoga school of philosophy yoga is you know uh, our concern today because as i said we recently observed the international yoga day we just got the background of indian uh, philosophy what is indian philo philosophy what are the different schools of philosophy here right what you know what is the major difference between these philosophical schools right now let us come to the specific area of today's study that is yoga yoga school of philosophy what do you mean by yoga yoga means it is the union it is the union of mind it is the union of body and it is union of the spirit when the mind body and spirit they unite together that stage is called as the yoga this yoga school of philosophy it tries to unite all these three components that is mind body and the spirit if you follow the guidelines of this school of philosophy you can really attain the knowledge that is true knowledge or you can attain the salvation let us understand what this school of philosophy is telling okay systematic collection of ideas of yoga is found in the yoga sutras of patanjali the patanjali maharshi is very important he is the 
he is regarded as the founder of this school of philosophy though the yoga was in practice before arrival of the patanjali but patanjali is the major person he is the major muni or the maharshi who compiled all the uh, yogic practices or the uh, yes yogic practices he compiled uh, all those ideas in a book and he published a book called uh, patanjali yoga sutra this patanjali's yoga sutra is the basis for this you uh, know uh, school of philosophy right the metaphysics of yoga is sankhya's dualism okay there is a similarity but i said in the previous slide that the, there is a similarity between sankhya school and yoga school there is a similarity between mimamsa school and vedanta school and there is a similarity between nyaya school and vaishesika school what is that similarity between this yoga school and the nyaya school that is the yoga school and the nyaya school both of them believe in the two forms that is purusha and prakruti okay uh, which the universe is conceptualized as composed of two realities these both of these schools believe that this whole universe is composed of two realities they are purusha and the prakruti purusha and prakruti both of these together will make this whole universe what is this purusha purusha is nothing but the pure consciousness whatever you are feeling inside that is purusha that means that is pure consciousness it doesn't have any form it doesn't have its own thought process nothing it is just a pure uh, uh, conscious existence but what is this prakruti prakruti is the phenomenal reality whatever there it is, uh, is there around you whatever you can perceive whatever you can feel okay that includes the prakruti see this gives this prakruti gives i said consciousness is pure it doesn't have any feelings or senses but this prakruti will impart the sensory organs it imparts the uh, uh, some thought process into your mind okay this is the uh, these are the two realities in this you know world both of them will make this universe okay this yoga school believes in this two realities then when this purusha and prakruti when they are combined together they will make the jiva the jiva means the living being all the living beings are made up of the purusha and prakruti this jiva is the result of purusha the interaction of purusha and prakruti this you know jiva is considered as the state in which purusha is bonded to the prakruti here the pr purusha that is is bonded with the prakruti that is the matter okay in various permutations and combinations there is okay uh, in the form of various elements senses feelings activity and mind now this body is composed of the mind senses right uh, i have the feelings i have different elements in my body all of these things make the prakruti part but whatever is there that consciousness is, is there that is the purusha part in my body that is the jiva okay this is the relation between purusha and prakruti and this yoga school of philosophy believes in these two realities then the epistemology of the yoga philosophy like the samkhya school relies in the three six pramanas okay see what is the basis for what is this epistemology epistemology is nothing but the study of the knowledge how the knowledge is gained there are three pramanas total there are six pramanas but this yoga school believes in the three pramanas pramanas means promises that means the uh, confirmed ways if you follow these confirmed ways definitely will get the knowledge what are those uh, ways that is how you can how do you perceive the thing how do you inform a particular thing and how do you interpret how do you read that is the pratyaksha anumana and shabda these are the three pramanas these three pramanas will you know let you or they will help you to gain more and more knowledge what is this pratyaksha pratyaksha means perception that means whatever you see just seeing might lead you to the some other the, the just by seeing you will may uh, they may it may mislead you somewhere but you have to perceive it though some reality is there it may be you know looking in a different some form but it's another form will be completely different you have to perceive that what you have to perceive the real nature of that object that is called as the pratyaksha right anumana means inference you have to hypothesize pratyaksha sorry uh, anumana means you have to infer You, there might be some uh, objective reality you have to inform some other meaning that is the anumana shabda means words you have to read the books 
by reading the books or by having the worldly conversation that is apta vachana that is having the conversation between the people by reading the uh, various written sources you can get the knowledge through these ways or through these you know uh, confirmed uh, ways you can get the knowledge according to the uh, yoga school of philosophy now the yoga philosophy differs from closely related non theistic sam sankhya school of thought by incorporating the concept of personal at essentially inactive deity or the personal god see i oftenly said that there is a similarity between the uh, thought process of nyaya uh, sankhya school and the yoga school yes there is a similarity with respect to the uh, dualism that is purusha and prakriti but there is a fundamental difference between these two schools that is yoga school and the sankhya school that is the personal god this yoga philosophy it believes in the personal god it doesn't give the form of the god it doesn't say that the god is like shiva the god is like vishnu or the god is like some something else it doesn't you know uh, explain anywhere in its uh, you know um, school but it will let individual conscious to pursue the god in its own way that is the personal god whatever the image you get in your mind by you know uh, imagining the god it is called as the personal god that is the your personal god this is the major difference this concept of a personal god is the major difference between sankhya school and the yoga school of philosophy now let us come to the historical background for this yoga school when this yoga school started who started it how was its initial stage okay now the origins of the yoga school they are unclear we don't know how this yoga started who were the people who started this yoga school we don't know with what asana with what pranayama they started but it is completely unclear we don't know who started and how it started but there are some references to this yoga based on the references mentioned in the some of the scriptures we can analyze that uh, we can analyze the age of this school of philosophy but this school seems to have developed in the ascetic milieus what do you mean by ascetic milieus ascetic milieu means ascetic means saintly life right ascetics saints saintly life milieu means the environment this school of philosophy originated in the environment of saints these saints are the rishi munis or the maharshis they were living in the uh, isolated way they had their own community they they were contemplating on the god they were contemplating on their personal god they were you know maintaining their bodily health this you know practice or this school of philosophy originated in that environment and that yogic environment that is the ascetic milieu okay uh, we can find the reference of this yoga uh, in the yo rigveda also the rigveda this is the oldest veda this has you know history of more than 3500 years right this you know veda mentions the word yoga the yoga or the rigveda mentions the word yoga in its book okay so from this we can analyze that the yoga is the uh, more than 3500 year old you know philosophy then the early reference to the practices that later became the part of yoga see yoga is not the uh, single concept this yoga includes various limbs in its school there are uh, various uh, you know uh, limbs called niyama is there yama is there uh, aparigraha pratyahara dhyana dharana different concepts are there but these individual concepts which combine together make the yoga that concepts are found in the different scriptures called the Uh, upanishads brahadaranyaka among all the 16 upanishads brahadaranyaka is the oldest upanishad this in this upan see these upanishads are emerged after the vedas right in the brah uh, sorry brahadaranyaka upanishad we find the mention of the some of the practices of yoga okay this brahadaranyaka is the uh, as old as you know, almost 3000 year that means 900 uh, BCE that is before common era now we are living in the 2000 uh, common era 900 before that that means around 
almost 3000 years back the brahmanika upanishad mentioned about the practices which were part of the yoga that means now uh, according to the upanishads this yoga school of philosophy is around 3000 year but according to rigveda it is 3500 year old school right the practice of pranayama see this yoga is not only the as i said it is not only single you know concept it includes various other concepts like pranayama pratyahara and other things but this you know practice of pranayama it can be found in the brahmanika again brahmanika mentions about the pranayama also now the practice of pratyahara this pratyahara i will explain the what is pratyahara what is prat, uh, pranayama in detail in the subsequent slides just remember that this pratyahara concept is you know found in the Uh, the chandogya upanishad so this is 800 to 700 uh, bce this dates back to the 800 to 700 bce okay now this is the historical background various scriptures mentioned uh, some concepts related to the yoga but when did this yoga emerged as the you know uh, separate school of Uh, philosophy that is darshana when this became the separate darshana in indian subcontinent let us look into it uh, at that yoga as a separate school of thought is mentioned in the indian text from the end of the first millennium bc that means what is the end of first millennium bc that means around 3000 years back right the systematic collection of ideas of yoga school of hinduism found in the yoga sutras of patanjali yes initially i said that all the ideas are the concepts are the thoughts related to the yoga are compiled by the uh, patanjali maharshi and uh, his book is called as the uh, patanjali yoga sutra right after the its circulation this patanjali published his book uh, after publication of this book people different people exposed themselves to this idea of the yoga okay uh, they wrote the bhashyas or the notes or the contem- commentaries the patanjali wrote the book but for this book various philosophers or the thinkers they wrote uh, another their own ideas they are called as the bhashyas after having so much contemplation after releasing or the after publication of the patanjali's yoga sutra publication here means there were no printers and all this maharshi wrote uh, uh, his you know thoughts in the uh, leaves okay so the, this was the medium of writing during the older days the, he wrote on the leaves or the, he might have mentioned that in the copper plates okay now after publication of such thoughts the bhashyas were written after bhashyas were written that again patanjali uh, whatever the patanjali had written that the known to be called as the Pat- patanjali yoga shastra or the treatise on the yoga of patanjali now this is how after publication of patanjali's book this school becomes the independent school of philosophy in the uh, indian philosophy right this becomes the separate darshana or the separate philosophy in the indian philosophical field now i said yoga is not the individual concept it incorporates different legs or it incorporates different limbs there are eight limbs uh, in the yoga school those eight limbs are called as the ashtangas or this eight limb or eight fold concept of yoga is called as the ashtanga yoga right the eight parts of yoga what are these eight parts the patanjali classifies the eight parts uh, of yoga like this okay yama according to these are these are uh, these eight are the classif uh, limbs classified by the patanjali remember that yama niyama asana pranayama pratyahara dharana dhyana and samadhi these are the eight limbs or eight parts that together make the ashtanga yoga okay now let us come to individual limb or individual concept let us start with the yamas what are the yamas yamas are the ethical rules in hinduism and can be thought of as moral imperatives this is a imperative on a particular individual and if you if these are the moral imperatives rather they are the moral imperatives that means you are not ought to do some of the things what you are not ought to do some of the things that means you cannot do himsa himsa or you have to practice ahimsa that means you should not do himsa or uh, you should not involve in the violence 
then satya that means you should not tell the lie okay these are the don'ts don't tell the lie that means you should follow the path of satya don't involve in the violence that means you have to follow the path of ahimsa asteya don't steal stealing is prohibited that means you have to follow the asteya then brahmacharya you have to practice the pure chastity or you should not involve in the any marital fidelity or you should not involve in a, uh, that means you have to show lot of restraint from you know bodily pleasures that is brahmacharya then aparigraha or non avarice or non possessiveness you should not you know cr- you know uh, you should not crave for accumulation of more and more wealth that is the aparigraha if you know uh, these are all the five emas or the five rules if you follow all these five rules then your first limb of yoga is ready okay then you will become uh, ready for practicing yoga that means whatever the worldly desires are there in you first you have to remove yourself uh, all of these things right you should not steal you should not tell lie you should not accumulate more and more wealth you should not have more and more bodily desires okay when you renounce all these things now your body will become you know ready for practicing the yoga now what are niyamas niyamas are the second limb in the yoga philosophy what these what, what, what do these niyamas tell okay niyama it includes the virtuous habits and the observations okay these are the do's in the initial slide that is yamas in the yamas they were abstinences that means they are like negative marks that means they they were the negative in nature but these rules they are positive in nature earlier they were the negative moral values these are the positive moral values what what are these positive values shaucha santosha tapas swadhyaya and ishwara prani pranidhana these are all the you know uh, do's that means you continuously you should do all these things then again you will become more and more perfect for practicing the complete ashtanga yoga shaucha means you know it very well that it is hygiene maintaining the hygiene santosha means contentment whatever you have you should not crave for something more whatever you have within your own limit be happy that is the santosha then tapas means contemplation or practicing ascetism or self discipline that is tapas that means hard work is also a part of you know uh, it can also be called as the tapas that is self discipline perseverance okay then swa adhyaya you have to contemplate on yourself that is a swa adhyaya this is very important you have to observe your behaviors you have to observe your thought you have to observe your interpersonal uh, interactions then it is called as this swa adhyaya then you will become more and more aware of yourself then ishwara pranidhana or pranidhana it is the contemplation of the ishwara apart from you know contemplating on yourself only again you have to contemplate on the supreme power that is the ishwara then it is called as the ishwara pranidha pranidhana then comes the asana this is very well known by everyone asana means the posture this yoga school of philosophy you know talks about the asana asana means the comfortable posture whatever comfortable is for you just follow that asana that means your body will ready to meditate see it is a posture that one can hold for a period of time staying relaxed steady comfortable and motionless because after the practicing asana you have to prepare your mind for meditation or the dhyana before going to that you have to practice asana whatever com- comfortable position is there for you just you know follow that po- posture make ready your body for the next stage of yoga right then come after the asana if you fo- find the perfect asana for yourself then you will become more and more ready for pranayama now this pranayama is nothing but the breathing exercise or rhythmic breathing exercises if you let the breathe in if you hold it for some time and again if you exhale if you do this on the rhythmic manner you will you know have the union between your body and the mind your mind will start to cooperate more and more with your body then you will become more perfect for next stage that is the dhyana okay next point is pratyahara pratyahara is the driving within one's awareness yes you have found the perfect asana for you yeah, now you have you know practicing the pranayama also after practicing pranayama now your mind will become very uh, more and more aware and you will you know 
uh, start to contemplate within yourself. It is a process of re retracting the sensory experience from external objects, whatever the disturbance disturbance is there outside you, you will not give much importance to it and you will start to focus more and more on, uh, that means within yourself, that is the Pratyahara. It is not a consciously closing one's eyes to the sensory world, it is consciously closing one's mind process to the sensory world. See, just by you know, closing your eyes is not Pratyahara, you have to close your mind to the outside world. See, if you if you are not distracted from the whatever the you know, disturbance is going around you, then it is called as the Pratyahara. Now, actual Dharana starts after Pratyahara, there is the Dharana. Dharana means concentration, introspective focus and one-pointedness of the mind. Okay, you will, you know, uh, after you know, folk, you know, after drawing yourself within, now you will start to focus on particular point in your mind that is called as the dharana. Next is dhyana. See, once if you, you know go within yourself, if you focus on particular object within your mind, then you are continuously focusing on, on that object only. You will not you know deviate from you know focusing on that inner object. That object might be a dia, it might be an any form of object, it might be your personal god, whatever you have imagined your, uh, within yourself, you have to continuously see that object without you know dis making it disappear. That is called as the dhana. After dhana comes your samadhi. That means see you are continuously observing that object uh, though there is a disturbance uh, around you so that will not distract you from you know focusing on your inner uh, you know object that is called as the samadhi state that means you are in complete harmony with your surrounding environment that means you have merged yourself with the universe that is called as the samadhi this samadhi state can be you know obtained after a lot of practices it is not you know it can't be achieved within one or two years continuous practice of yoga continuous practice of this yama niyama pratyahara dhyana asana all of these continuous practice will lead you to the samadhi state then if once you achieve the samadhi that will be your blissful stage in your life and that is more and more satisfactory point in your life that is the samadhi then what about God? Whether the yoga philosophy believes in the God or not? Yes, God, yeah, the yoga philosophy believes in the God. I said this is the major difference between Sankhya school and the yoga school. Yoga believes in the God, but Sankhya, it doesn't believe in the God, but it believes only in the Purusha and Prakriti realities. Okay. Now, the various philosophers, including the Shankara, they said that this yoga philosophy believes in the God and they also described this yoga school as the Sankhya school with the God. If you add the concept of God to the Sankhya school, it can be called as the yoga school. Okay. Okay, these are all the major, you know, concepts related to the yoga school of philosophy. Uh, We'll meet with the next uh, new concept in the next video. Till then, bye-bye. Take care.